welcome to Grafted In, the program that explores the Jewish roots of the Christian faith. Did you know that Jesus was Jewish? His Hebrew name is Yeshua. Did you know that the Virgin Mary was Jewish? Her name in Hebrew is Miriam. Did you know that all the early apostles were Jewish? Did you know the Apostle Paul said that Christians were grafted in to the Jewish roots? Each week, Pastor Don and Don Along will explore these and many more fascinating teachings about the Jewish roots of the Christian faith, as well as bringing you up to date on events happening in the land of Israel. This is a half hour you won't want to miss. And now, for today's teaching, let's join Pastor Don and Don Along. Hello, this is Pastor Don Long, and I'm here with my daughter Jordan Long, as uh, we're in the season of Hanukkah. And I thought it would be kind of a, a fun thing today to talk, Jordan, a little bit about the history of Hanukkah and then how Hanukkah's celebrated. You know, if you, <clears throat> if you go back into the, uh, the period between the Old and New Testaments, we call it the intertestamental period. Uh, the Protestant Bible ends with the book of Malachi, and then we open the, the Gospel of Matthew. Many times we think we finished one, we open the, the next one, but they're two entirely different worlds. In fact, there's 400 years of history that happened uh, in between those uh, two books. And in those 400 years, some, some things happened in the life of the Jewish people that have now been brought into the celebrations of who the Jewish people are, and in fact, were such in the time of Yeshua, and one of them is Hanukkah. And to understand the, the significance of Hanukkah, you must first understand a little bit about the history of the Middle East. Uh, Alexander the Great, uh, a powerful general from Macedonia, came in and was in the process of conquering the known world. Uh, he conquered all of Syria, all of Egypt, and, and in between Syria and Egypt you have what they called Palestine, and uh, he conquered that as well. And Alexander the Great had a, had a, a, a way of, when he conquered a land, of, of trying to keep peace by letting the people of the land be who they were, practice their religion, go about their business uh, as if everything was normal. And so uh, he would have had the Jewish people continue just to be Jewish people. But when he died uh, at a very early age and his empire was divided, uh, th there soon came an emperor of that middle part of Palestine called Antiochus. And Antiochus did just the opposite. Antiochus insisted uh, everybody's got to be like us, the Greeks. They've got to adopt Greek styles. They've got to uh, uh, worship like the Greeks do. And so he began to outlaw all things Jewish. Uh, the, the main things that he could quickly outlaw was the observance of Sabbath. Mm -hmm and the circumcision of uh, young people, of your babies, and the requiring sacrifices to be uh, offered to Zeus. And in fact, Antiochus set up an altar to Zeus in the temple itself, if you can imagine. And rather than make people Greeks, what they did is it made all the Jews very, very hostile mm -hmm. toward him. And uh, one of his officials decided that they would go out into the communities and enforce the offering of sacrifices. Mm -hmm. They came into a small village and they were in the process of saying, okay, they set up this and they went over the priest to the priest in the village, uh, Matthias, and said, uh, you, uh, we're, you're going to sacrifice and you sacrifice the people will follow you. Well, he absolutely refused. I'm, I'm not going to make a sacrifice on a pagan altar. And one of the zealous Jews who figured that he would uh, prove how good he was to becoming a Greek and everything ran forward to, I'll make a sacrifice. And Matthias slew him with a sword <laughs> and then slew the officer and, and a rebellion started. Okay, so that, that's the beginning of, of the history of what's going on in this period. So now you got a rebellion and Matthias' son, Judas Maccabeus, that's where the book of Maccabees comes from, uh, literally means Judas the hammer. Mm -hmm. uh, and Judas uh, the Maccabee started what we would call today a guerrilla warfare mm -hmm. against the troops of Antiochus, against uh, the powers that be and the armies would come in. Well, lo and behold, Judas started winning, winning victories. And at one point, uh, the armies from Syria came down and he defeated them and he recaptured Jerusalem. 
awesome day. <laughs> uh, absolutely. But what do you think he found when he went to Jerusalem? He found it in the temple was in ruins and desecrated with pig's blood on the altar and he had a big work on his hands. So, well, so what do you do? You know, here you are, it's the temple of God, mm -hmm. sitting there on, on Mount Moriah. Uh, it, it, how, what are you going to do? This temple has been totally desecrated. It's been uh, abused. So you've somehow got to find a way to cleanse the temple. You, first of all, you've got to remove all the things that are uh, contaminated. contaminated. And then you're going to try to gradually reestablish. You can imagine he's going around and, and where's the Holy of Holies and, and, and where's the table of showbread? You know, yeah. did the priest hide it? Where is it? Uh, and they found the menorah. Mm -hmm. Now, what is the menorah? It's the, the light, big light of the temple the, the, that they kept burning constantly in the temple. That's right. And do you know how many... <clears throat> lights there are in the there's menorah? There's seven branches. On there's the seven menorah. branches on a menorah. And so they, they're going to come about to the lighting of the menorah, but they have to look into their traditions to find out how do we properly make the oil mm -hmm. uh, to, for the anor menorah. It can't and just be any old oil. It just can't be any old oil. There's a process Special way to make it. To make it. And, and uh, so and by the way, do you know what the wicks are made out of? Yes, we found that out uh, during Sukkot, didn't we? Yes. They're made out of the torn up pieces of the high priest's garments, the, the old garments that they couldn't wear anymore. They would tear them up and make the wicks for the menorahs. Wow, you know, it's kind of like the American flag. You mm -hmm. know, if, if it gets torn and everything, you don't just throw it in the garbage. You, <laughs> you, you've got to burn it. And Well, they would take the high priest's garments when they got worn to a point where they were not useful anymore, cut them into strips and make the wicks for the menorah. So you have the high priest garments and then you have this, this special oil. Mm -hmm. Well, what did they find in the ruins as they looked through the, all the, in, and we've been to Israel, you know, all the mm -hmm. underground yeah. caverns they have there and everything. In one of those storehouses, that, what did they find? They found one little jug of olive, the olive oil, the pure olive oil that was used in the temple. They found one little jug. Of one jug of it. And they figured out that one jug, uh, if they were going to relight the candles, they would w light the wicks with this uh, olive oil from this jug. And how long was it going to last? It was only going to last one day, one whole day. And it was supposed to be, uh, how long did Well, it how long did it take to make yeah. the oil? It took eight days to make the oil. Ah, so I'm going to start. I want to light the candles. I found it. I want to rededicate the temple. Mm -hmm. But, uh, you know, I've got enough oil for one day. But it's going to take me eight, eight days, days to, to, make to make more. But they wanted to dedicate the temple anyway. Right. So they went ahead and poured the oil in and lit the candles. And what happened? It, it stayed lit. That's the miracle of Hanukkah. It stayed lit for eight days until the, they were able to make more. So, so Hanukkah is a, it's a day of a miracle. Mm -hmm. Uh, isn't, that, that's, isn't that what they say? Um, the, a great miracle happened a here. A great miracle. Turn on the little dreidels that they spin. Yeah, if you, if you around with Jewish uh, mm -hmm. people, when it, it's a game, children play with a dreidel. Mm -hmm. It's like a little top, mm -hmm. and they spin it. Uh, and that's part of what's written on some of them. A great mm -hmm. miracle, miracle happened, happened here. here. A great miracle. And the miracle is that the cruise of oil, which should have supplied one day of, of oil, absolutely kept those uh, menorah burning for eight, eight days. days. Now, that leads to an interesting uh, uh, observation because we have a little Hanukkah mm -hmm. candle here. If you have many of them, they'd be called Hanukkah. Mm -hmm. And in our sanctuary, we have the menorah, which is seven branched. That's right. But the Hanukkah candle is mm -hmm. Uh, nine branched. That's right. It has eight for the eight days, mm -hmm. and then the center one is the servant candle, which servant. is used to light all the other ones. It's called the servant candle. Yeah, and in shamash. Hebrew, shamash. And so they would light the center candle. Mm -hmm. That's the servant candle. It serves the others. That's right. And then they light each night of Hanukkah. You're going to uh, light a a candle each a night. Candle each night. Add one each night. A actually, you know, Jordan, there's there's two different traditions, traditions yep, in yep. in Judaism about lighting the Hanukkah candles. Uh, among some of the Jews, 
you light an additional candle each night. Each night. So night yeah. one, you light one candle, light, light two, light two candles, two. and three candles. Yeah. Others do it just the opposite. Mm -hmm. The first yes. night they light start with a eight, eight, and then they move down. Move it down e each time. Mm -hmm. I, I kind of like the idea that light yes. grows. Yes. Yes. Not that you're getting darker, but it's getting lighter. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. And, and the um, and so you use the shamash to start lighting the candles. It, it's not just remembering the eight days, it's remembering the miracle That's right. of the eight days. Now, interestingly, many, uh, many Christians and, and many people think, oh, Hanukkah, uh, isn't that the Jewish Christmas? Mm. Not at all. <laughs> it, it, it's not at all Except Christmas. Except for in America. <laughs> Except for in America, <laughs> yeah. Uh, the whole concept, for example, uh, in Hanukkah of giving gifts is an American invention I among Jewish people. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you go to Israel, you, you don't... talk to our friends over in the Shamron and they talk about how um, Hanukkah is just any other day there, but they do, they observe it with the lighting of the candles, but they don't give gifts to each other. It's just a regular day in right, their right. year. It's not, it's not made out to be as big of a thing as uh, it is here. Sukkot is the big thing over right. there. Well, and Hanukkah, first of all, <laughs> it's not a... It's biblical not a feast. biblical feast. It's not a God-appointed feast. It's not one of the ones God says mm -hmm. you must keep. Mm -hmm. It's more of a nationalistic yeah. Jewish like holiday. Like the 4th of July. Yeah, like the 4th of July. We remember an event that happened in mm -hmm. our nation. Hanukkah is the remembering of a great miracle that happened in the freedom uh, of the Jews. Right. And so the, the lighting of the candle then it, it's not meant to be a gift-giving time. Mm -hmm. I, I, Jews in America did that as they began to assimilate, didn't want their children feeling left out because Christmas is such mm -hmm. a big thing, and so they began to exchange gifts. But the celebration of Hanukkah is a celebration of a great miracle here. So here's the question I think in our Jewish roots we need to ask ourselves. Well, if we look at the biblical feasts mm -hmm. and Passover and Sukkot, uh, if we look at those, uh, and then we come to Hanukkah, you know, well, if it's not a mandated feast, why would we keep Hanukkah? Mm -hmm. so, so my question to you, Jordan, is did Yeshua keep Hanukkah? He did he observe Hanukkah? Did. He certainly did. I believe it's in Luke. It talks about he went up into the temple, into the temple porches on the Feast of Dedication. And that's when he gave his, when he talked about, I am the light of the world and then talked about you are the lights of the world. A city set on right. a hill cannot be hidden. So it, 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 it went along with the theme of Hanukkah, what they were celebrating. What, you know what's very interesting is Yeshua had come to a point in his ministry where he realized that uh, the, the Jewish religious leadership in Jerusalem uh, was hostile to him mm -hmm. uh, because he was confronting their religious traditions. Mm -hmm. And so by this point in his ministry, very early on as a matter of fact, he spent the bulk of his time in Galilee, mm -hmm. around the Sea of Galilee, teaching in the communities around there. And, and he rarely came down to Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and in fact, he, it, it's quite clear if you study the scriptures, he was doing everything at that point to avoid going to Jerusalem. Right. And yet we have this recorded that it was the Feast of Dedication. And he was in the temple. In Jerusalem. He's in the temple in Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. So it was Hanukkah was an important enough event. He traveled from Galilee to Jerusalem. It wasn't just like he stepped out his door and went to the temple. It right. was a long journey from Galilee it, it was down a to Jerusalem. Three or four day journey to get there, and in addition it was a uh, it was coming into hostile mm -hmm. territory, but he felt that Hanukkah was an important enough was important. Mm -hmm. Now I think that part of the importance that Yeshua attributed to that was not just that uh, Hanukkah was the remembrance of uh, the event in their history, but it was that a great miracle happened, happened there. Mm -hmm. So I think several broadcasts ago we were talking about uh, the timeline of Yeshua. Mm -hmm. And we established, I think, pretty clearly that Yeshua was not born in December. That's right. He was not born at That's Christmas right. time. I mean, if anything we know about how the church celebrates <coughs> Christmas, point is, we know it wasn't uh, right. his birthday. That he was born 
when the shepherds were in the field. That wouldn't have been then, it would they have been at the time of Sukkot. We right. went through that whole teaching at Sukkot to establish that Yeshua was more than likely born at, uh, in Sukkot. And then we traced the time of the birth of John the Baptist to find out um, when he was born. And we can pretty much locate where that was. And then Mary had become pregnant and how old John the Baptist, I mean, we have all that in And we came to a conclusion that when the angel Gabriel announced to the Virgin Mary that she was going to become with child, when that conception took place, was in the season of what? Hanukkah. 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 And how appropriate that the fest during the festival of lights, the light of the world would have been conceived into this realm. I mean, that's, that's amazing. Awesome Isn't that exciting thought. that the that God would say, "I am going to initiate a great miracle mm -hmm. happened here, the great miracle of the incarnation, mm -hmm. the great miracle of the Son of the Living God taking up physical mm -hmm. residence in the womb of Mary, uh, the great." miracle of that conception mm -hmm. is going to take place in the season when Israel is celebrating the great, great miracle, miracle of That's Hanukkah. Right. That's right. And so as, as Christians, not only can we celebrate Hanukkah because Yeshua did, mm -hmm. but we can celebrate Hanukkah because it represents mm -hmm. who Yeshua yes. is. Mm -hmm. He is the light of the world. And if we will come to him that light gets in our life. That's right. Well, this is Pastor Don Long and Jordan Long. We're glad you joined us for Jewish Roots.